So now I have the pleasure of passing the floor to Your Excellency, Mr. Dev Anand Konwar, Governor of Bihar. Holiness, Yalwa Kamappa, Kunzing Samar Ripoche, Venerable monks coming from different countries, Professor Sempa Doji, I'm sorry I will miss his speech, who will be speaking on first Karmapa, then president of this great historical and religious congregation on 900th anniversary of the first Kamappa Dusum Khenpa and president and secretaries of Mahabuddhi Mahabhyara Management Committee and the head monk of the great Mahabhyara under the holy Buddhi tree. And ladies and gentlemen who have come to this great congregation from different countries and distinguished visitors and observers coming from many Buddhist countries and cultures. I am immensely pleased to be present here and be a part of this great historical occasion of 900th anniversary of the first Kamappa at Bodhgaya in this Kal Chakra Maidan, which is already known to the world so famously because this is the place, this is the holy spot where Prince Siddhartha, it was called Uruvela in those days, and Prince Siddhartha came down from Kapila Bachu, Kapila Bachu, to this Uruvela, and here he attained what is called the supreme wisdom. And therefore, Gautam Siddhartha became Buddha or the Enlightened One. Now, living in this present days, seeing the developments all around, and being associated with peoples, who have practiced Buddhism in so many different perceptions, in so many different understanding of only human nature and the human mind. I have come to believe Buddhism. I feel like equating this Buddhism with humanism. Because Buddha himself said, mind precedes all mental states. If that is the thing, then man in all ages, in all countries around the world, is guided by one single thing. What is that? There's a mind of man. And Buddhism has only to do to control, to regulate, to understand, to dig 
delve deep into the ocean of the mind. Therefore, Buddhism is the only path shown by Sakkamoni Buddha 2,600 years back, the only road for the salvation, for the survival, for the amelioration of the human beings and the human spirit. I am feeling greatly attracted towards whether it is meditation, which Kamappa practiced and preached for no less than 12 years he was practicing meditation. In modern day, we have got a 10-day course of meditation done under the Vipassana Global Pagoda in Bombay, in Mumbai. Whether it is meditation, whether it is concentration, and concentration in the mind, as Lord Buddha says, will only give you answers for all your human problems. Whether it is optimism, whether it is pessimism, whether it is for destruction or for construction. And the greatest transformation in the world history is the transformation of the mind of Emperor Asuka the Great. He killed, not in hundreds, he killed in thousands and lakhs people. And that man became the greatest propagator of Buddhism, which is now flourishing as different flowers in the same garden. In half of the world, the man who killed in his Kalinga war, how many thousands of people got killed? Immediately after this, once he came into contact with Lord Buddha's teachings, he understood what is the human spirit, what constitutes humanism, and the progress, peace, brotherhood, and compassion in this world. So he left the sword and he became the greatest propagator of Buddhism as long as he was alive. Peace and compassion and non-violence became the state policy of the empire of Asok the Great. So that is the single example in the human history of the transformation of a killer who was happy with waging wars and battles and killing human beings from kingdom to kingdom became the greatest transformer. He, be, he got himself transformed and he sent his own son and daughter for transformation of humankind in distant lands. In as far as Sri Lanka, Tibet, neighboring countries, and all the people of this land called in the Magadha Empire and either other empires surrounding Magadha Kingdom in those days. So the greatest and the shining example of any single human being transformed from being a bloodthirsty animal to a compassionate with loving care and showing the path of non-violence and love. This is the greatest transformation of a humankind. So I feel greatly attractive. And Buddhism is not one. There are so many forms, apart from Hinajana, Mahajana, and all these things. There are Tibetan Buddhism. In Sikkim, there is Buddhism. And nowadays, the main tenets of Buddhism are getting mingled up with even distant, far away tribal cultures in different far-flung areas of our own country, not to speak of other people living in other countries. 
So, it is being practiced not in one stereotype way. They are developing, it has become a way of life, a way of culture, all these things. So, they are in so many places Buddhism is practiced. Afghanistan is today a what? It is a Islamic country, it is a Muslim country. But it is there that Buddhism thrived. Bamiyan Stesu was established long before this Stesu at Budgaya was established. And that is where Chinese traveler Hiven Shang prayed. In the 6th century he prayed. No, he, it, his sixth century it was established. He prayed on his way to Budgaya in 629 AD in Afghanistan. So how he cuts across all this, it makes the borders of countries fall down, cultures of countries to mix. So this is the only, only way and the royal rate to success, survival of humanity. I am very happy. The organizers have organized in such a decent and grand manner this congregation on the occasion of 900th anniversary of first Kamappa Dosum Kenpa. Not only in Sikkim, Bhutan, Nepal, and other places. Even we have got very small minorities of tribal people who are living on the hilltops, inside the jungles in northeast India, Assam, Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, Tripura, in the Setagang Hills, Arakan Hills in Bangladesh. There are tribals who are practicing Buddhism and they are rigorously following its main tenets, which is putting a great influence, great impact on their individual as well as communal life. And ultimately, that is the life. Those are the flickers in dark spaces of our countries. I am very happy on this occasion to be a part of this function and I am thankful to the organizing committee for giving me the chance to be associated in a brief manner and in a limited way Particularly, I appreciate the proposal of celebrating this 900th anniversary of First Kamapa under the guidance and initiative of His Holiness the 17th Kamapa Thinle Thay Dorji and His Holiness the 14th Samarpa Rinpoche. It is being participated by the international Buddhist community from different countries for the liberation of all sentient beings and for world peace, which we need most today. As I have been informed, Karmapa is the first tulku in the history of Tibetan Buddhism and is well-known lama in the world. The reincarnation system of Tibetan Buddhism, it is said, was started from the first Kamappa's time only. Lot of people 
are trying to create confusion with regard to this practice of Buddhism and the great institutions. I will not call them offices, I will call them institutions like Dalai Lama, Karmapa, etc. But we know that they are practicing only Buddhism. They are not practicing anything else. And Buddhism, as Lord Buddha himself has said, constitutes of wisdom, teachings. It has to do everything with the mind, nothing with matter. Therefore, we must not allow ourselves to get confused with those confusions that are being sought to be created, with the institutional institutions and institutional functionaries by some people around the world. It is the matter that is becoming destructive. It's the mind that will take ultimately the upper hand, will get the upper hand and mankind will be saved. Thank you all very, very much. And now I invite the most respected Galwa Kamapa to proceed with the presentation of the trophy to our guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Dev Anand Kongwar, Governor of Bihar. So a big thanks, really, to the governor. Thank you.